I think a major awakening happens when we realize that the dialogue happening in our mind is us gaslighting ourselves into believing that receiving less is what we deserve. Think about it. We have the entire world to go against us, to judge us, to make us feel that we are not capable or on the verge of greatness. So if the last person that you have to come home to is yourself, how do you expect yourself to thrive if you're just as much against yourself as everyone else? In this video, I will identify ways to acknowledge when you're settling, ways that I've settled, and ways that I'm trying to break the cycle. Let's get started. When you feel you have to work yourself up to an excitement rather than feeling the natural joy and passion while doing a specific thing or being around a specific group of people, you're probably settling. I know when a chapter in my life is coming to a close and I've just changed so much and I've outgrown a specific area, it takes me a lot of energy just to exist in those settings. For example, at my job, something that I used to do naturally I've been an instructor for seven years. It's something that I can do in my sleep. And it would give me so much joy just to be of service in that way. But now I'm starting to feel like it's this one-sided relationship to a point that I know if I stop putting energy towards it, nothing would happen. No one would care. I think the fear of me just one day never showing up and forgetting my responsibilities sounds so attractive in my mind right now because I'm settling but we have to stay the course and I knew that the season that brought me to this place has blessed me with just so many opportunities. I've learned so many great lessons. I've grown as a woman and as a communicator through the mistakes and the experiences that I've gained in this specific journey that I'm in right now. So I could never take it for granted. I just have outgrown a space and I have a plan and I can't make any irrational decisions right now. Um, it's like I see the light at the end of the tunnel and I see everyone going towards that same light at a faster pace than me. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's get it, God. And God is like, relax, like calm down. You need every drop of the lessons that you need to reach this next season so it's like even when you realize you're settling making a plan instead of acting on emotions is always more beneficial than not and i think the best thing to do so that you're not completely burned out so you don't feel like you're using too much of your energy in your old spaces and you don't have any more energy to exist in this new version of yourself Nourish your body as best as you can and create really good habits for yourself and create boundaries for ourselves. If I create a routine and I establish boundaries in my work life to keep me spiritually and emotionally and physically balanced, then I won't really receive this heavy burnout. I won't see this heaviness in my chest before I'm about to do something because I know how to preserve my energy to keep more of myself for this future that I want. I want you to know that every person has experienced just exactly what you've experienced and staying patient and also being present where God has you is extremely important. So I want to tell you that you're not settling for taking care of your responsibilities. You're not settling for having a nine to five. You're not settling for being where God needs you to be right now in preparation for where you're headed. And what's settling is you knowing that and when that opportunity comes, you choose not to take it. I'm talking to the people that are ready and it takes you being present where you are long enough to know that you're actually ready. So when you feel like you're bargaining with yourself and telling yourself how well you can go without rather than just feeling the gratitude for what you have, you're probably settling. Being the understanding person, always taking one for the team and going without just so others can have serves no one. Having good intentions to feed the poor when you barely have two pieces of bread to put together doesn't make you a hero. It just means that you've been so well conditioned into receiving less 
that you withering away to dust just so someone else can live makes more sense to you than you actually getting your needs met. Do you see how that actually makes no sense? I think so many people are accustomed to the dialogue of their suffering that the energy used to actually take accountability for what they can do to change their outcome just kind of slips through the cracks. And of course, you can't focus on better. You're stressed. You're in survival mode. You're struggling right now. And when you're in that mindset, it's hard to do anything, let alone see yourself as the common denominator in your suffering. And I know that's kind of hard to hear. And I'm just being honest because I've been there and I am there. You know, I had to stop bargaining with my worth, with my lifestyle, with my dreams. There is more than enough room for me to take up space. There is availability and there is opportunity out there. Once I realize that I am capable and that I'm just as capable as anyone else, I don't keep telling myself that I'm so okay with, with without. Like I remember um, I was having a conversation with someone and about a celebrity and they were like, she's just taking too many opportunities. She should have given that opportunity to someone else. And I'm like, what? How dare you? Like, what am I going to say? Oh, I'm too successful. I'm sorry. I, as much as you want me to take this opportunity, I just, I've, I've taken too much. Let me give it to someone else. It's like, no, nothing happens like that. Like, are you so much of a hater? Do you hate yourself so much that that's how you talk to yourself? Like, ew. When your focus is on the time and energy spent while doing a specific thing, outside of having gratitude for the opportunity to do a specific thing, you're settling. It just seems that everything that you do according to this person or according to this thing has a cap on it. It costs you something, whether it time, money, energy, spiritual health. It just seems like it costs you more and more the more that you keep doing it. It just seems expensive to talk to you. It just seems expensive to hear you out. It seems expensive to go out there and support you for whatever BS that you have going on. If you do it anyway, you're settling. I knew it was time for me to leave a relationship because everything seemed to have a cap on it. The things that we normally would do just seemed like it was taking so much of their time and their energy. And I was like, what do you mean you don't want to talk? We're in a long distance relationship. That's literally all we do. Like what, what's going on here? The truth about that is we have to trust our feelings when they come up for us. And we also have to trust when they come up for other people as well to make the hard decisions that they are not going to. Outside of what they're telling you or outside of what you tell yourself to make you feel okay about what's going on, be real, you know? I was in a, I was in a relationship where I felt like I was the placeholder. And this is a hard conversation to have, especially for someone that you really care about. But I had to know because of the way that I was being treated, it just didn't identify with the way that I wanted to be loved. I felt like I was being the placeholder. And when you present that to someone, they're not going to admit that to you. Of course, what, what was he going to say? Of course, you're using you as a placeholder. I treat you like this because I know you're not her. It's like, no, they're not going to say that. But if you know what you know, outside of whatever they say, what you feel is enough to take action. And I think it's natural for us to feel hurt by that decision, even if the decision is hard, but it can't force us not to do it. And that's when you're settling. When you know that a man would rather be a clown in another woman's life instead of be the king in your life that God placed you in his life to be, that's how you know it's past, it's past saving. It's, there's nothing for you to do about that. Like, you have to kind of take your L's and just 
walk away. And for me, that was very hard. And so I would tell myself everything that he was saying, well, he's just working on things. Well, his mother was a piece of shit. So I'm really doing the best that I can to show up in ways that he probably is not used to. Like all of that is no, like I'm settling. Sometimes you're settling by wanting to be the better person in, a, in, in someone's life. Sometimes Putting yourself in a position to show someone everything that things could be in a positive way, it does more damage to you than someone else. And outside of you being good, you have to know when to hold yourself accountable and walk away. And that's the brutally honest truth. When you're making excuses in your life as to why you should stay put or why you shouldn't do things or why you're not meant to be XYZ when so many opportunities in your life have shown you that you are meant and worthy and supposed to do XYZ. Do you remember the movie Save the Last Dance? And this girl did all of this dancing in an abandoned building with a black guy, all to get to a point where she needed to audition for Juilliard. And she was like, oh, I can't audition for Juilliard. My mother was dying while I was dancing. And I get it. It's triggering. But girl, audition for Juilliard. Like, do the thing that is your audition to Juilliard in your life. Like, feel the fear and do it anyway. Just do it. Because the pain of regret stings a lot more than the pain of failure. I'd rather try and know that I've done my best and I've gave it my all and it not be for me than actually trick myself into not doing what could potentially be the best thing for me because of whatever I'm telling myself. I think this imposter syndrome is ruining a lot of people's lives. I know people that are so naturally charismatic and entertaining, but they're just not putting themselves in positions to do that. And it's a hard job to have, but I'm just like, man, if you put so much more energy in actually doing the thing outside of telling yourself that you're not meant to, I wonder how far you would be, you know? And I think I feel that way for myself and I have dreams just like everyone else. I just had to do something about it and this is me doing something about it. When it comes down to like creating videos in YouTube, I've been wanting to do this for years, years. And it took me cutting people off. It took off, uh, it took me forgetting all of the people that used to make fun of me or making me the butt of every joke. Um, it just took me really sitting down with myself and realizing one that everybody that never liked me or that kind of made jokes about me I don't want their life I would not be okay with the life that they have so they have no place there there's no room to talk and also like me stopping that didn't make their life better nor did it make mine so it's like we at the end of the day no matter what anyone says about us to us we have to do what we're called to do and i think making and creating and communicating and speaking is something that i have been transitioning into doing for a very 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 long time so i'm just happy that i'm here now and i knew i know that this is the right time because i am completely stripped of any ego to uh to actually do this right and um I'm just excited about the journey. Yeah. I think one of the best and probably hardest things to do when you feel like you're settling is asking for help and actually having a community. It takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of strength to actually ask for help, to actually let someone know that you are struggling in an area or you want more but you don't know how to get from A to B. Building community is so important. I think that's why I'm trying the best that I can here. But if you listen to any older person, not all, because some of them, you know what? Scratch that. Ask 
the mothers in your life. Ask the people and the parents and the aunts and the uncles and the grandparents and the people that have experienced so much more of their life. They probably have more life behind them than they have ahead of them. Ask them about settling. I'm pretty sure they're able to tell you a lot. And they're able to tell you, you know, make that decision, cut that person off, leave that relationship, leave that marriage, take that other job, go to that different country. Because as you get older, you just start to realize your fear and you not knowing what's next keeps you away from so many amazing experiences. And then it takes you living life of regret of you actually not taking that choice to say dang that was an opportunity that i had in my hands that i could have done so much more with man i wonder what my life would become had i taken that opportunity and it's so hard to say because we're in this new age this new era where everything is at our fingertips and we think because the world is different we know more than maybe people that are older than us but That is not true. We have been incarnating on this place for so many years. There is nothing new under the sun. Just new ways to do things. Experiences sometimes are always the same. That's why for generations we enter cycles in our lives. Because things, as much as we try to think that they're different, they're really not. And if there's someone older or just someone with more experience in your life, if they're sharing with you or they're, if they're able to identify where you're settling and they're trying to pull you out, trust that they're coming from a place of experience because they felt the pain of regret of not knowing what their life would become if they would have just said yes, if they would have just tried. And... Yeah, I'll never forget the conversations that I've had in my life with people much older than me with more experience and more pain telling me to go after something because honestly, life is so short. This week, someone that I used to work with passed away and she was so funny. She worked with kids. We actually ended up working at Victoria's Secret together because she had a job on the side, and we would laugh so much about, like, things that we wanted to do. She loved going on vacations, and she loved kids and all of these things, and I'm like, you go, girl. You know, my life was just so different, but I'm so happy that she had all of these experiences. She had so much perspective because her legacy is all of the chances that she took, You know, all of the things that she had to teach me because I was so stuck in my ways about certain things that like now I'm able to see it from such a different way. And I just I was I only knew her for such a short amount of time, but she was so infectious. The way that she was able to talk to me and the conversations that I've had with her were amazing, were memorable. And I think that's so awesome to say about a person. That's their legacy how you felt when you were around them, how you felt when you spoke to them, the laughs that you were able to share. Um, I hope she had an amazing transition. And um, yeah, I think this whole thing about you are what you settle for, life is so short. If you knew how much time you truly had, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be settling as much as you are. And I don't know or no one knows when their time is up, but if we can take a chance on having more opportunities, do it, you know? I think our life expands and our world grows and our mind grows by the opportunities that we're able to take, by the chances that we're able to take, by the places that we're able to go. And if we just limit ourselves to just who we are right now or the places that we've been and the things that we know, I mean, it's an okay existence, but I'm someone that wants all of it. God gave me this life and inherited me this life so that I can experience everything that he created. And by God, I want to do the best that I can to see everything that he made, or at least most of it. (laughs) Thank you for listening to my rant. That is all that I have, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.